haven't finished it yet. Let's get it done. Okay. So what we're going to be looking at today is remember those roles that you guys were figuring out all last uh, week where you had either you were either a soldier, a spy, or an officer. This is where you're gonna need to remember what that is because we're gonna go through um, a series of battles. And as we're, I'm giving you this presentation, you guys are going to be making decisions based on your position, okay? So how I suggest to do this is you're gonna wanna split screen right now to where you've got our meat in one side, and then number 15 and 16 open in the other side, but you can have those just like the two tabs because you don't need number 15 the whole time. But number 15 and 16 are the two things that you guys are gonna have to do things on while we're presenting today. So if you're okay, directions are there. Back and forth, yeah, if you're okay flipping back and forth, you can just have all of the tabs up, but just make sure that you have those tabs up so you can get to them easily, okay? So essentially what's going to be happening is I'm going to be presenting this presentation to you guys, okay? Where we're gonna talk about early battles in New York. As I'm going through this, you guys are paying attention because you're gonna need to know the information that I'm saying in order to make good decisions. So, at some point in the presentation, I'm gonna to get to a slide that looks like this, where officers are going to be making a decision. If you are an officer, you are going to be picking up this tab, or you're gonna be opening up this Google form that says, which position are you? And give it a second, because of course it's going. What you guys will open as we are going through this presentation. So when I get to that slide where it says officer's decision, if you're an officer, you're going to click over to the tab where you have which position are you Google form. And you are going to put here, you're an officer. Well, who was this supposed to do the questions, right? Because okay. I just started doing the questions. Don't do them yet. Nope, because okay. we're going to be doing those together. I'm just showing you. Just exit out of it. Okay. All right. Um, so, then, so then you're going to hit next, and it's going to take you to a page that says officers, and you're going to read this slide, and you're going to see the scenario that you're going to that you're being presented with, and your options, the two options that you can choose from. All right. So based on those two options, the scenario and everything we've talked about, you're going to make the decision on what you think we should do. Let's say you want to do this one. You're going to click next. Then it's going to tell you what the results of your decision were. On each one of these, you're going to have morale points that you gain and supply points that you gain, with the exception of spies. You guys don't have supply points right now. So this is what you're going to see, basically, what's the result of you making that choice as an officer. This is going to ask you a question, basically, to make sure that you read through what your result was. And then you're just going to check both of these so that you know what morale points you gained and lost. And then you're just going to click Submit. But only officers are going to do that. So if you are a soldier, you are not making a decision when you're an officer or when we're talking about the officer's decision okay cam I, you got to get out of here with that baby cam i need you to get out of there with that it's too loud thank you all right now <laughs> multitask i know right now the rest of you guys are going to have this up so if it's not your time to make a decision we still have to hold you accountable for paying attention to us today and rather than do fill in the blank notes, everybody's going to be filling out this worksheet as we go through. So let's say that you're a spy. You're not an officer, but we just made 
the officers make a decision. While we're doing that, I'm going to be presenting what happens in real life. You are going to fill out each of these three boxes. What happens because of this officer's decision? So you're going to find out what actually happens. And there's going to be a slide and I'm going to tell you guys, okay, now go to your Google slide and fill this out. So here's where you're going to fill out what happened as a result of this officer's kind of dilemma that they were in. So even if you're not an officer, you are filling out this Google slide. By the time we are done with the lesson today, you will have filled out all three of those boxes. Don't worry about the morale and supply. You're just filling out those boxes. Okay, so that's what everybody's doing no matter what your position is, but there will be a time when I tell you, okay, if you're an officer, go do the form. If you're a soldier, go do the form. Okay, does this make sense somewhat at least? All right, then let me go ahead and start. Sorry, I had all my stuff up, but I got to change it up a bit now that I'm on the other computer. <laughs> mm. Okay, I'm returning bell work too as we speak. Um. Great, so on Friday, you guys watched an Ed Puzzle where they went through and kind of talked about, picked up around Bunker Hill and talked about some of these major things that are going on. Um, you know, or, or between that time of Bunker Hill and what will end up being Christmas night for the Battle of Trenton. So we're just going to be kind of going over those things, but you guys are going to be making decisions. So some of this should sound familiar, hopefully, but we'll see. All right, so recap. Declaration of Independence is signed and delivered July 4th. 1776. At the same time as the Second Continental Congress is putting this document together, they're also appointing George Washington as the head of a Continental Army, and he heads straight to Boston. Boston, we've just seen Bunker Hill happen, which was actually a loss by the Americans because they were the ones that retreated, but we inflict mass casualties on, on the British. On top of that, now we have militiamen from all over. You got these new Continentals, and now you got George Washington for strategy. And you've essentially surrounded the city of Boston on all sides. Okay? And the British have no way out except to retreat. Okay? So they can either surrender or retreat. Of course, they're not going to surrender if they don't have to, because that's basically saying, yeah, you guys can go ahead and be independent. But he retreats. So the general gets all his troops. They head out of Boston Harbor. They go back to England to regroup. Literally regroup to be much bigger. And so Washington, as this is a great victory, we sieged Boston. We took back the city. He knows they're going to come back. He knows that the British are not going to just fall down that easy. So he makes the decision that, you know what, they're probably going to go to New York. Because besides Boston, New York is one of the most prosperous port towns. And it's going to be much easier for the British with their ships to go to a port town than, like, say, Philadelphia. So Washington predicts this correctly. King George, super angry. He hears Bunker Hill. He hears Declaration. He sends the full force of his army and navy to the colonies. Thousands of men are going to be dispatched into America. There's going to be hundreds of ships that head into New York, just like Washington predicted and probably had some intel. But not only do we have the full force of the British Army and Navy coming, we've also got 9,000 Hessian German mercenaries that are also on those boats. That means that's 9,000 additional soldiers 
that are paid soldiers that are German, they we call them the Hessian, that are also along. So we're even more outmanned than we thought we would be. So Long Island is where the battle is really going to begin. So the idea here, Washington predicts that New York's where it's gonna be. So he's been fortifying it for like the past two months. He's getting the high ground. We know that high ground is typically, you know, the best position to have. But he makes some mistakes and some missteps, which is why people question George Washington at the beginning of the war greatly. So the British have this plan. They see some weaknesses in Washington's setup, and they're able to get onto Long Island and realize the Americans realize they're even more outnumbered than they thought they were. There's thousands of British soldiers. They go to one side of the island. Washington wasn't really predicting that that's where they would be. And the British take advantage of that. And they're able to make it through these passes. They're able to break through American lines. Whenever we say um, that the colonies break their lines, that basically means they begin to run away. And rather than being like a wall, they're now like kind of all running backwards. Not a good situation. Usually that is when the other side, what we call takes the field and they're winning the battle. So the colonists lines break and they're pretty much backed into a corner. They're surrounded by the British. They're gonna be pushed back into this area where you see camp. We're gonna lose a good amount of soldiers during this engagement. It's just not a good situation, not a good look. We pretty much get our butts handed to us in Long Island. And now Washington has to make a decision. And he's pretty much got two options. He either surrenders or he retreats. But the problem is, is if you look at that island here, this is water. So he would have to cross over about a mile. He can't go into New York. He can't go into Manhattan. He's got to cross about a mile into New Jersey in order to get to safety and retreat. That's 9,000 soldiers with very limited boats that he's got to move a whole mile across the sea. This is not a swimmable mission. So officers, here's where you're going to be making your first decision. Everybody else has the Google slide up. When we go to the reason, like what actually happened, that's when you'll fill yours out. But officers, you're opening the Google form now. And you're gonna get to a slide that looks like this. You got it, officers, you get to make that decision now. So just so everybody knows this is the scenario that they're in. These officers, are feeling pretty beaten. They just took a big L in this battle at Long Island. They, they're questioning Washington a bit. He made some mistakes. And now they're outnumbered and the morale seems extremely low amongst the soldiers. The morale's just kind of like that, that will to fight. When you have high morale, you're usually really like go-getter. When you got low morale, you're kind of like, why are we even here? So it seems like morale's low. And then really, according to, like, it's not really a real rule because you can break it, but gentlemanly rules of war, when you've been backed into a corner, you're supposed to surrender. So here's your options, officers. Are you going to try to throw the British off your scent by sending some maybe misleading messages? that you hope the British will intercept and then try to retreat out of Long Island? Or are you gonna beg Washington to surrender? Now that the British have sent the full force of their army, it's clear that it's not gonna be as easy as it was in Boston. Maybe our ability to win in New York is kinda not gonna happen, but if we surrender, then we'll be able to regroup and get more troops and be okay. Maybe the militia can handle it for a little while. So if you are an officer 
make your decision. You'll see what your results are. But tell me in the chat, what are you choosing? Are you going to choose A or B? You can choose A, that you're going to try to retreat across this mile-wide river with all 9,000 men, or are you going to beg Washington to surrender? So put it in the chat whether you're going to pick A or B if you are an officer. All right. You guys are the first collective officers that all chose A. I had a lot of people choose B today. So let's see what happened. So if you chose to try to throw the British off your scent with misleading intel and then go and retreat across the river, you got it. We're going to show you what happens and how that is successful um, when we get back to the slideshow. But because you make this good decision, yeah, retreating isn't like a super big morale boost, but it's not like you're about to surrender and the whole cause is over. So you do lose five morale points but you gain supply points because you are able to get all of your supplies transferred over to New Jersey. Anybody that begged Washington to surrender, you obviously don't know Washington very well because Washington is only gonna surrender in this thing if he's killed basically in the process. He is going to refuse to surrender over and over and over again. And he is furious with you for even suggesting it screaming at you. Don't you know what we are fighting for? It's so much bigger than just like, you know, a little disagreement. And he's even starting to question your loyalty. So good thing none of you guys chose B. So you're all, you're all doing, doing pretty good so far for my officers. So let's see what really happens. Now, this is the time where if you weren't an officer and officers, you'll do it too. This is what ends up really happening. So everybody's filling this part out in the Google Slides, number 16. So instead of surrendering, Washington is going to order his men to secretly and silently escape across the East River during the middle of the night. As bad as this sounds, retreating was something that Washington was really good at because he really probably should have surrendered here. His back was against a wall. Mm -hmm. But he was able to put this plan into place with the help of people that, you know, were there for him. He was able to get every single troop out of Long Island that was in the camp. I mean, he obviously lost a lot of people during the battle. He's able to get all of them and the supplies unnoticed by the British. And this is how he does it. He sends that fake me those fake messages because he knows this is they're spying all, all around, especially at this point. It's so hard to figure out who's a spy, who's a loyalist, who's a patriot, that both armies have spies within their ranks. So Washington keeps this plan under wraps where he's sending intel and even making some officers believe that he is asking Congress to send reinforcements to Long Island so they can try to fight their way out. But of course he knows he has no chance of doing that because he knows that those reinforcements don't even exist. So with this kind of, you know, fake messaging that he's putting out there, he's trying to throw the British off their scent so that they don't try to come back and, you know, um, stop this retreat. He doesn't even want retreating to be on the, on the radar. And then he reaches out to a privateer. Privateers are going to be big in this war because they are going to be people that own private ships that are going to help the Continental. So no, they're not technically in the Continental Army, but they're going to be helping. So he sends these boats. He asks Washington, trust me, I can get all 9,000 of these men across. You just have to fill this part out. You summarize this part, Z, in your um, Google slide. Okay, so, so this, his name's William Glover, and he says, you got to trust me, Washington, I can get all your men during the night across the river into safety. And Washington trusts him. And he does everything that he can to keep this secret under, under wraps. And he is able to successfully get all of them out. Now, it's getting really close to sunrise. And when the sun comes up, I mean, that's when the light comes and the British are going to be able to see that they're retreating and then they're going to attack. But luckily, there's a really dense fog that happens that morning across the river. 
and the British are not really able to see the final ship. So really it takes them about an hour past what we would call da or, uh, dawn, where the sun comes up. But because of this fog, he's able to get the remaining men over. Because if he leaves any men there, I mean, they're going to be tortured just right there. I mean, they're, they're prisoners of war. So they're able to successfully put this plan into place. And yes, it's retreating. It's not like they want anything here, but they live to fight another day. And quite literally, by the time the British realize what has happened, they have disappeared. And some in the last class say they, they pulled a Roanoke. And they kind of do. The British yeah. have no clue that this is happening. He was so strategic about it. And so, no, we don't win anything here. But, like I said, we live to fight another day. Spies, it's your turn. You've got a little bit of a dilemma yourself. So, spies. Let me go. Spies are going to open up the Google form now, if you're a spy. And you're going to be deciding on this. We need information about the British Army now more than we ever have. We've lost every major battle in New York. Time seems to be running out. We need to know what the British plan to do next. A young man, 21-year-old patriot named Nathan Hale is going to volunteer to go behind in enemy lines, pose as a British loyalist, and spy. And then give all those, you know, all the stuff that he figures out, give that information back to Washington. So you're kind of in this spy ring where you're making the decision whether you're going to let Nathan go on. So make the decision here. Are you going to allow Nathan Hale to go spy? He did volunteer. And this is a chance to get some very valuable information to make everybody feel safe. Or are you going to tell him it's too risky? Being caught's going to mean, I mean, if you get caught as a spy, you're going to be publicly hanged right away. Like, no questions asked. Barely any trial. And yes, tensions are high and everybody's scared, but is it really worth it to lose <laughs> another man that wouldn't need to necessarily be lost? So I see Eric in the chat saying it's too risky, so he's choosing B. The rest of my spies, what are you saying? What do you think? A or B, are you going to let him go? It's worth it? Or, nah, it's too risky. Write it in the chat. You can write just A or B if you want. Yeah, don't give us a response. Just write the letter. Eric, Brianna, waiting on those cameras before I write an email. Miss Dokes. Let's go, spies, if you are a merchant. All right. Tiffany's going to go for it. Worth it. Who else was a merchant or a lawyer or a blacksmith? This is your decision. Don't just wait to see the answer. Make your choice. Just try it. All right. So since you two are split, I'm going to assume you're the only two then. Since you're the only ones participating, the rest of the spies are absent, apparently. Hmm. So if you're going to allow Nathan Hale to spy, he does get caught. Sorry to tell you, he gets caught and he is hanged that very day. But he's a hero now. He's a martyr. He risked his life to get intelligence from the British, not just on the battlefield. Now, this is a battle of minds. And that is going to really, really rally the troops, literally. It makes for a great story. Every American, every human loves a good hero. And he becomes one of the first heroes of the Revolutionary War. So you made the decision to allow him to go. Tiffany, you got 10 morale points. But unfortunately, Eric, making the decision that it's too risky, nothing is too risky in this war. 
because many in the army are now very frightened that we have no clue and no um, hope that we'll know what the British are planning to do next. The unknown leaves everybody worried. They're already kind of questioning uh, Washington a bit. And now we don't even have any intel against the British. So not a great decision. It does lower morale a little bit. But that's okay. We'll get better. We'll, we'll make good decisions later. All right. So for everybody else, this is what really happens. So Nathan Hill poses as a loyalist shopkeeper that just wants to fight against those pesky rebels. He's in the ranks of the British Army. He's gathering all the information that he can, and he gets caught. There's a couple of theories on how he gets caught. Some people believe that his own brother actually turned him over to the um, British, and then they caught him after that. Some believe that he went to a tavern one night, got a little loose, maybe spilled out some information he shouldn't have spilled out, and those people you know, told on him. But either way, he gets caught, never makes it back to Washington's camp. And it is said that his last words were, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. What do you guys think that means? Who can volunteer and tell me what does that mean? I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. What does that mean? Anybody can come over the mic. I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Why do we spend on this long? We'll be in here till 2.20. I can keep you till 2.20. Yeah, like, guys, it's, he's trying to make a point. He, You can only kill me once, so why, you know, that's... He literally has the rope on his neck. That's some, yeah, he literally has the rope on his neck. They say, do you have any last words? And he says... I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. And kind of like what Skyland says. This dude wishes he was a cat, had nine lives, and he would do it over and over and over again. That's okay if you submitted the form after you made your selection here. You're good. He has no regrets. Yeah. In fact, he says, I'd do it again. So I only got one life to give, take it. I'd, I'd do this 20 times every time you can catch me. So... This is a line from a play that was published 50 years prior. So it totally could have been just used kind of as propaganda to get people to, you know, get behind the cause. But it makes for a good story. So we're going to go with it. Right. He might have said it, but the British aren't going to keep good accounts of that. All right. So, spies, you, you made your decision. But let's keep going. So we've retreated from Long Island. And it's basically just more loss. We try to make some moves up in the White Plains. We can't make it happen. We lose. We have to retreat. New York City is going to fall to the British control by, by the middle of September. Fort Washington, which is very close to New York City, is going to be taken by the British as well. And what's really bad about this is we've got a lot of stores of like muskets, guns, supplies, blankets, food, all taken. And then another fort across the river, Fort Lee, is also taken by November. So here in just a few short weeks, we have pretty much lost all our forts in the New York area. Not only have we lost forts and supplies, about 3,000 men have been killed or captured. So you can tell by my voice, really not um, a great morale builder here. Losing and losing and losing doesn't usually fare well. And on top of all that, winter is literally coming. So winter of 1776, and all of these winters are pretty dang bad for the Continentals. But this is their first one that they're experiencing together. Now for the British, winter's not all that bad. We've got General Howe, who has declared the war basically over. We're just going to take a rest here. We've taken over New York City. And since New York City is under British control, what law has the king made? The Quartering Act. 
So they are put up in houses and buildings. They've got all types of supplies. They are living the good life, as good as it can be when you're, you know, separated from your family, but living the good life per se, at least compared to the Continentals, who mm -hmm. right now are basically bunkered up in the woods. They don't have enough tents for everybody. They don't have clothing. They don't have boots. They don't have blankets. They've just lost and lost and lost and keep retreating. They don't have confidence in Washington. But how can Washington, when we know that in our Declaration of Independence, we complained about the Quartering Act, so how can we turn around and then ask Americans to quarter our soldiers when we just said that we're against that? So he's got no choice. And as he's seeing morale getting low, he also knows that their enlistments are, are starting to come up too. And that if he doesn't get a win, this thing could be done. Thomas Paine makes his name again, back into the picture. He's the one that writes common sense. He realizes that the sentiment towards the war is starting to fade. He sees the soldiers' pain and struggle, and he publishes a series of pamphlets called The American Crisis, because that's exactly what we were in, a crisis. In these pamphlets, he begs for Americans to support the war. Because it's kind of like, you know, when someone has a really good new idea and everybody's really excited about it, and then something goes wrong in that idea, and then everybody kind of starts to lose interest in it and doesn't support it very well. That's kind of what's going on right now. If you're not winning, you're not really going to get the support. So he's pleading to Americans, please support these men and their effort. This is for our freedom. And then he's also writing directly to the soldiers, please don't give up. You're our last line of defense. You're the ones that got to make this happen. And he has that famous quote, these are the times that try men's souls. So Thomas Paine is kind of an interesting guy in general. He would not be a guy that realized how important he was during his lifetime. Because at his funeral, it's rumored that between two to five people even show up. He was just a really kind of arrogant guy. He made a lot of enemies, but he was so good at writing and, and writing directly to people to really get them to understand and, and, you know, the support. He even donates all his money that he makes from these pamphlets. He donates them to the Patriot, the, to the Continental Army for boots and clothing and stuff. But during his lifetime, he would have never known. So soldiers... Now you're pulling up the Google form and you're gonna make the decision. So when you guys open that up, here are the decisions the soldiers are making for those of you that are not soldiers. So clearly the Continental Army has lost every major battle. It's winter. I mean, just think even today we call seasonal depression during the winter because, you know, the days are short, the nights are long and cold, and you're stuck in a house. Imagine that after you've just lost a bunch of battles. So it's not looking good. You've got to make a decision here. There aren't even enough tents and blankets, you know, to keep you going. Are you going to run away? You need dessert? because at least it's better than freezing or starving to death. And it's clear that we're not fighting the same battles we were in Boston. Or are you gonna read those patriotic words of Thomas Paine? Remember why you're there in the first place and give Washington your full trust that he's gonna figure this thing out. So if you're a soldier, which many of you must be because not many people have responded, go respond in your Google form. And then let us know in the chat what you chose. All right. We've got Skylin who's going to read the patriotic words of Thomas Paine and uh. fight through it. All right. Anybody with A? Anybody going to try to run away? You're over this. All right. So let's see what your decisions lead to. If you decide to run away, Running away, they can't make it easier else everybody would run away. 
So if you get caught running away, you are going to be flogged probably in front of the whole regiment, which basically means you're going to be whipped as a punishment in front of everybody because they can't make it easy on you and you're still going to have to serve anyways. And then everybody knows that you ran away. So what kind of patriot are you? So you're going to lose morale points because now you're dealing with your injuries from being punished and no one's going to be sharing their blanket with you, you traitor. So supply points, negative 10. But for those of you that chose B, you are inspired. This is a good decision. You stick around. You're living to fight another day. And Washington is going to devise some plans to really get everybody else on board. So your morale is up. Your supplies might still be down. But this was the best decision. So what happens in real life? With everybody's putting in their Google form in your own words. There were people that are going to desert. There's going to be people that are going to leave. And they're going to get caught. And they're going to be punished. And they're going to be made examples of. But the majority of men are going to be inspired by Payne's words. Washington's going to have it read to the armies. I mean, these are a lot of the time 14, 15, 16 year old, I mean, boys, not even reached adulthood yet. They might not even be able to read, but they're going to be inspired by this American crisis. And they're going to live to fight another day. So, when it comes down to it, at this point, the Continental Army has lost every major engagement so far. Support for the war is just dwindling to almost nothing. The British are pretty much celebrating because they feel like, eh, when the spring comes, we'll just bad couple battles, take Washington, and we're done. We're good. Washington knows that he has to win something. He has to make some type of stand because a lot of his soldiers' contracts are about to be out. If he doesn't get a win, he knows he's not going to have any type of army. So that's where we're concluding today. I know, really kind of down. But since we know we win the war, we know it's going to turn around soon. So we'll be talking about Trenton and Princeton tomorrow. Kind of doing it a similar way. And the bell work will be over what we talked about today. So hopefully you remember. I will post this presentation if you need it to help you do the um, slides if you got kicked out. I also recorded class, so I will post that so you'll be able to see it as well.